language is something we all use on a daily basis without giving it a second thought. We take it for granted. Since speaking is such a mundane part of our lives, we often tend to think that language itself is mundane. Well, today we're going to discuss why language is far from mundane, and its use is in fact a remarkable phenomenon that is worth investigating. We will talk about why language matters. After this short lecture, you will be able to define sociolinguistic research, understand and explain why investigating language use has societal consequences, identify some issues that are worth investigating, and name several broad philosophical frameworks and paradigms in the study of language use in society. Let's start by asking some questions about language that you may not have thought about before but that I am sure you will find quite important once you give them a thought. Must immigrants learn the language of the country they migrate to? And if yes, why and how? Should the host country provide them with resources to do so? How can professionals evaluating claims of asylum seekers distinguish between true refugees and war criminals that only pretend to be refugees? Why do American schools delay foreign language instruction until high school, despite ample scientific evidence that acquisition is less effortful at a younger age? What does it mean to be bilingual or multilingual? I can go on and on, but I now encourage you to pause for a second and think. What kind of language issues matter to you? Take a minute to jot them down and prepare to discuss them with your classmates later. It is important that sociolinguists find answers to these questions and other ones like them, because how we talk has huge consequences in a wide range of spheres. It can affect one's professional positioning and access to resources such as education and employment. Language is an inalienable part of how we construct and present ourselves as individuals to the world. It reflects ideological stances and struggles. Just think of the fact that our society still finds it acceptable to talk about adult women as girls, but not about adult men as boys. We enact and maintain social hierarchies through language. For example, it is common for students to address their professors by the title and last name, but for the professors to address their students by their first names. And that is an example of a social hierarchy. Symbolic violence, sexism, racism, xenophobia, all can be enacted through language and fought against through language as well. These are all areas that sociolinguists address in their work. While there are a variety of methods used in sociolinguistic research, in this course, we're going to employ a broad range of approaches that fall under the umbrella of critical ethnographic sociolinguistic research. This research is critical because it centers on the issues of language and power. It is ethnographic because we investigate language practices in situ, in the field where they are used, in specific situations and under specific conditions, and we do so by observing them, interviewing their users, and participating in these practices ourselves. This research is sociolinguistic because we investigate how and why language matters socially, politically, and economically. In the course of such research, it is important to remember that language is a social practice. It is embedded in everything we do as individuals and members of society. We make sense of reality through language, construct social categories, morality, order and social institutions such as education, government, polity, religion, and so on through language. And last but not least, we construct and share knowledge through language. Research of any kind is inextricably linked to the construction of new knowledge and the understanding of what it means to know something. Sociolinguistic research is no different in that respect. There are several broad philosophical approaches to knowledge, and three of them are prevalent in sociolinguistic research, so let's discuss them one by one. The first approach is called a positivist one. 
scholars working within this paradigm approach reality as objective and knowable, existing outside human influence. They act on the assumption that whatever phenomena exist can be studied and verified through observation, experimentation, and logical proof. The corollary of this approach is that it is highly descriptive in nature. While descriptions are important, this research does not always allow us to gain insight into the phenomena that are not directly observable. The constructivist paradigm is almost the polar opposite of positivism. It treats knowledge not as absolute, but rather as a phenomenon mediated through society and its norms. Reality is viewed as constructed by humans in the course of their human activities. A lot of the concepts that we treat as very real, race and ethnicity, gender and intelligence, religion and education, deviance and achievement, and so on and so on, are culturally dependent social constructs. They are, nevertheless, very real and have very tangible consequences for individuals and societies. Like positivists, constructivists see reality as knowable and explorable through observation. However, they acknowledge that the world under exploration does not exist outside the influence of humans, and the knowledge of this reality is constructed through social interaction. The final paradigm we'll talk about is pragmatism. Pragmatism approaches both reality and knowledge as complex notions. Pragmatists reject the notion that reality is either completely objective, measurable, and context-free, or completely constructed, subjective, and only interpretable rather than measurable. A complex reality requires a variety of approaches to the construction of knowledge. The pragmatist paradigm is often associated with mixed methods research, looking at phenomena from different angles and perspectives. And this paradigm is gaining ground in the current sociolinguistic research. In the next discussion, you will take the concepts we address today and use them to identify the language issue that matters to you, to determine your own approach to reality and knowledge, and to formulate your research question.